you know, the public action programs, um, the part that makes it a nonprofit and not just a, a co-op or a buyer's club is that we want to do some programming, some education, first of all, which we talked about before, information seminars, brochures, speakers bureau, farmer's market if possible. And then the other thing is that this biodiesel funds uh, for school buses and farmers. We want to have a subsidy fund. And those um, funds will be awarded to the people that are the First of all, the school system or the farmers that demonstrate the most need, and that will be determined by the board of the, the club. And then the funds will be used for either storage setup, at the, uh, for example, at the farmers, or to pay for the uh, price difference between the petrodiesel and the biodiesel for the schools, because they probably would not have a place to set up. And then we will ask those, okay, here's how we're going to pay for that. Okay, first of all, we're going to be asking those who do not drive diesel vehicles to directly contribute to the cause. It's like, now, you, I don't need to worry about biodiesel because I don't drive um, a, bio, a diesel vehicle. Well, that's not true. You can contribute by contributing to this fund and then making sure that the people who are driving diesels today are putting biodiesel in. And then we're also going to ask the people that do have diesel vehicles that can afford to use biodiesel to help contribute to these, the concept of universal access. This is kind of a technology concept where it says that those who can't afford the technology should not be left out because they can't afford it. If it's a new technology, everyone should have universal access. For example, the libraries allow free internet access because of this concept of universal access, where it says not every person is going to have the ability to buy a computer or be able to hook up a computer line, but they're going to need access to that technology to make it in this society. So universal access means that there's a way to make sure that those people who can't afford that new technology can't get it. And so biodiesel, I think, fits into that. It's a better product, better for the environment, better for health, and um, it should not be restricted to people just because it costs more. And how are we going to fund all these activities? Um, the first one we're going to go for is uh, startup grants. We also are going to ask for membership fees for the, from the buyers. Uh, probably $25 for six months and $40 for a year. So that's not going to raise a whole lot of funds. Um, we also want donations, do fundraising activities, and then the consulting fees that we talked about before, and then business partnerships. What kind of partnerships? Well, with uh, first of all, with Mighty Veg, they want to be a business partner of the club, and we want to do it by becoming a partner in the dispensing tank. This is a nice picture from Wayne Dresser of their pump. This is a type approved above ground dispensing system. It is uh, fire code approved. Um, it also meets all of the local requirements. It's a fire guard tank in there with all the safety features, you know, anti overfill, no explosion, that kind of thing. And then the idea is that these, these tanks exist so you can have split tank. You can have a pump in the front and a pump in the back. And then the buyer's club storage and dispensing tank, still attached to this, probably on this side, maybe, or in the back, is for just the, the members of the club. And they will reflect the group discount, put it in there, and then people have their cards. be like um, a gift card. You slide it. You have a certain amount on that card that you've already prepaid for. You can go pick it up at your convenience, whether you want to pick it all up at once or pick it up a little bit at a time, um, as long as you get it out of there before we need our next shipment in. And then in the front will be uh, the Mighty Veg retail dispenser. It, um, under all the regulations of the, the weights and measurements department. And then that will be open to tour, biodiesel tourists, what we call people who just want to fill up and don't want to deal with the, the club. But we have, you know, given the option, obviously the, the retail dispenser will be more expensive because the, the retailer will pay for the bulk of the cost of the infrastructure here and the upkeep. The actual infrastructure itself will be built from grants and donations and membership donations as well. Um, we can go through different processes for getting this money because we are a nonprofit. It's a little bit easier for um, nonprofits to have access to any kind of capital in these days. If you go to a bank, they're 
not too kind to um, startup organizations like Mighty Veg. Now the good news is that Mighty Veg or is willing to pay a lease for that front area, and so the the lease should pay for any overhead costs associated with the pump, so electricity, phone line, rent, and that will be reflected in the retail price. And obviously it has to sell enough at retail to cover all those costs. And then um, the other good news is that Mighty Veg will give a percentage of the retail sales back to the, the club. So if Mighty Veg is selling out tank after tank, the club is going to be benefiting. And then the, finally, the idea is that the club builds the tank because if the retailer either goes out of business or is bought by another company, for example, Chevron comes in and buys Mighty Veg, the club still has control of the tank. The infrastructure belongs to the club, and then the new retailer will have to negotiate with them or continue on with the, the tank, with the current lease um, agreement, but they cannot take that infrastructure away from the club. Mighty Veg has what the Buyers Club doesn't have right now, have all the state licenses and permits to broker and sell biodiesel at the retail level. Um, that gives access, the club gets access to all those advantages as well. Um, the initial state and local approvals to open a retail pump are already um, available through Mighty Veg. We've already worked with uh, Slow County in both Paso and Aurora Grande to uh, secure locations for these pumps, these retail infrastructure. Um, so those spots are ready, willing, and able, and they are waiting for us to put these tanks in. We also have extensive product knowledge, industry knowledge, so you'll get that um, from Mighty Veg. And then we have the established relationships with multiple vendors, suppliers, and producers throughout the state. So we're not happy with one supplier, we go out and find another supplier that can do it for us. Finally, what is it that we need? What are we asking for you today? We want buyers. We, want, we have to have at least 1,000 gallons to start our order, so we need as many buyers as possible. We also want manpower. We need volunteers to help fill board positions, to set up the nonprofit, and to run our um, programs and activities. And then we need time commitment from you guys, once per month meeting if you're on the board, or set office hours if you want to volunteer. And then money. Obviously, we want donations to both the subsidy fund and then for the uh, storage infrastructure fund. And then also to help with operations if possible. Okay, that is it. That is the conclusion to our show.